Alright, so I am back, and in today's video, I have a very fun topic that we're going to be discussing, and that topic is going to be the quarterbacks of the future. These are quarterbacks who are either in their first, second, or third years who had a really big breakout year who I think are going to be top 10 level quarterbacks moving forward. Now, I have four quarterbacks on this list, and I also have three honorable mentions, so without further ado, let's hop right into it. And the first quarterback on my list, and I think if you make this list without this quarterback being on it, you are doing an injustice to society. It is, of course, C.J. Stroud. Now, not only has C.J. Stroud been an absolutely incredible quarterback this year, but he has basically resurrected a dead franchise in the Houston Texans. Let's not forget, after the whole Deshaun Watson situation going down there in Houston, the Houston Texans had no future quarterback and no real bright spots on their roster. But after they got C.J. Stroud, he has not only taken this team to a potential playoff spot, but they have them in prime position to make Super Bowl runs within the next couple of seasons. This is a guy who currently has 3,844 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions, and had he not missed time this season, and played a little bit better and the back end of things could have been in discussion to win the MVP award. And for a young rookie quarterback to be in the MVP discussion at all at any point this season, I think is incredibly impressive. And I think it's very clear that right now he is definitely in the conversation to be a top 10 quarterback. We've seen him go off for games where he had 470 yards and five touchdowns against the Buccaneers and dominate opposing teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Indianapolis Colts, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Has he been a little bit streaky at times, especially as of late? 1000%, but a lot of that's just been due to injuries. And now that he's healthy, he is back on the field playing excellent football and I just think this kid has so much potential. From once being seen as a potential bust after a horrible game in the preseason against the New England Patriots, to now being the face of the franchise who is going to be an elite, legit quarterback for the next 10 years. You gotta give a round of applause to CJ Stroud, my pick for the Offensive Rookie of the Year. But next up, we have the franchise quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, Mr. Brock Purdy. Now if you've been following my channel, you would know that I've made a couple different comments about Brock Purdy and how I thought he was being slightly overrated by many people, but that wasn't a spite at his game and thinking that he was not a top 10 quarterback. It was more in spite of the fact that I did not think he should have been the front runner for the MVP award. And I think it's finally time that I give him the respect and honor that he actually deserves. Because this year he has been phenomenal. This year he currently has 4,280 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. And whatever has been tasked of him, he's basically been able to get it done. This is a guy who went from being Mr. Irrelevant to being one of the best quarterbacks in the entire NFL in just a matter of a couple games. And sure, you can give credit a lot to the system and the players around it, but you also have to give respect to Brock Purdy for his awareness to get to the position where he is currently at. We're talking about a guy who has great pocket presence, good mobility, he has good accuracy, has a really strong arm, and great anticipation. And while I don't think he's a level of a quarterback like a guy like Dak Prescott or Justin Herbert, I still think he's a very good quarterback, and even to be mentioned with those names should be a bit of an honor for him. I know he's coming off a very bad performance against the Baltimore Ravens, but there's not very many quarterbacks who are going to have good performances against them. They are legitimately a great team. But for a guy who, again, was Mr. Irrelevant, who is now the starting quarterback for one of the most historic franchises in NFL history, who was also in the middle of potentially winning a championship this year, I think he's been very impressive. And I think for all the haters, and partially including myself, I think it's time we actually give him the respect he deserves. We gotta understand this is a guy who was taken in the seventh round, who is now playing like a top 10 quarterback. I mean, name another guy who was taken that late in the draft who has turned out to be this good. Well, I have one name, and it's Tom Brady, and uh, we're not gonna start those comparisons quite yet. But if he keeps playing like this and he wins five championships, then maybe we'll start talking about Tom Brady's status. But let's go ahead and move on to sort of a late bloomer, but it is a quarterback who is playing fantastic football at the right time, it is of course Jordan Love. At one point this season, it was very unclear if he was going to be the franchise quarterback moving forward because he just wasn't very spectacular. He would make a fantastic play here and there and then just have the most boneheaded plays you'd ever see. But in his most recent seven game stretch after the Pittsburgh Steelers game, he has been freaking fantastic. On the season, he currently has 3,843 yards, 30 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. And in my personal quarterback rankings, I currently have him number 13th overall. And for a guy who is officially now the starting quarterback for an historic franchise in the Green Bay Packers, I think this is a ridiculously good start for him to be on. We're talking about a guy who has the expectations to be the next Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, who currently has 30 touchdowns to 11 interceptions in just his first season. Imagine what this guy can do after a full offseason of being the official quarterback after his first rookie years in the books. We're talking about a guy who's going to continue to progress and continue to make playoffs and have deep playoff runs over and over again. Jordan Love has maybe the strongest arm in the entire NFL. He makes some ridiculous throws from crazy angles. Love also has pretty good accuracy, a great deep ball placement, good pocket awareness, as well as mobility. And maybe the most important thing you can have as a quarterback in the NFL, he has a great understanding of the system around him. And as this Green Bay Packers offense just gets better and better and after they address the offensive line problems they are currently facing, he is going to be an absolute menace to deal with. We're talking about a very young quarterback in his first ever season who is passing the ball to guys like Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson and two rookie tight ends. And while I think those receivers can be great in the next couple of seasons, we have to understand those are practically rookie and second year players. So not only is he maturing with the team, but so is the team around him. And I think if you're a Detroit Lions fan or Minnesota Vikings fan or Chicago Bears fans, you just have to be saying to yourself, oh man, not again. 
because this team has a historic record of turning these type of quarterbacks into legendary type players. And while I'm not ready to declare him the next Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre, what I am ready to declare him as a, probably being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL current day. And I'll make a bold statement, I think he could potentially be the best quarterback within his division by next year. Sorry Jared Goff, Justin Fields, if you do stay as the quarterback of course, and Kirk Cousins, I do think Jordan Love can be that guy in this division. And to all my Packers fans who are watching and are extremely happy to see Jordan Love's name on here, I just want to say one thing, I am absolutely jealous of you. I am a Las Vegas Raiders fan. I've been dealing with Aiden O'Connell and Jimmy Garoppolo. You know how much I would kill to have Jordan Love? I would do anything. You know what I would do to have CJ Stroud, Brock Purdy, and the next guy on this list? I would do so much to have him, but instead, we might get Bo Nix. I, I don't know. We'll talk about the Raiders in the offseason. Sorry for my little rant. The next quarterback on this list is Anthony Richardson, the young rookie quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. Now, I know, I know, he didn't play a whole lot this year, but when he was playing, he was absolutely phenomenal. In these short games that we did see him, which was basically like two and a half games, he had 577 yards, three touchdowns, and one interception. And rushing the ball, he had 136 yards and four extra touchdowns. So basically seven touchdowns to one interception in about two and a half game span. And when Anthony Richardson was playing, they were having some extreme success very early on. They had a win against Houston, a win against the Tennessee Titans, a sad loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars in week one where they lost by 10, and a loss to the Los Angeles Rams in overtime by six. So just imagine what this team would be doing today with Anthony Richardson. When they took the pick and they took Anthony Richardson and had Shane Steichen, I was jumping for glee for this team. Because when I was doing my mock drafts for this team before the offseason and before I had this YouTube channel, I was saying that Anthony Richardson to Shane Steichen would be an absolute masterclass. And while the sample size was extremely small and we'll have to see how he recovers from this injury, I think it has shown that he is going to be a very good player moving forward. We're talking about a guy with elite athleticism, great ball placements, elite arm strength, and once he gets more comfortable within the system and has better pocket awareness and more responsibility with his body, I think this guy's limit of how good he can be is just through the roof. And I'll make a bit of a bold statement here. I think of all these quarterbacks, I think that he has the potential to be the best of the four. That's just basing it just simply off of potential. I think his potential is even higher than a guy in CJ Stroud. But with that being said, he hasn't really showed me anything to reach that mark yet. I have to say right now, he is of course the fourth person for a reason. But if he can sustain what we saw earlier on this year, stay healthy and continue to progress and let that talent flourish, he could be fantastic. And yet again, it just appears that this Indianapolis Colts historic franchise has got another quarterback on their hands. And yet again, my Raiders whiffs on all of them. It pains me inside, guys. It just, it just pains me. We took fucking Tyree Wilson just kill me. But now let's move on to a couple honorable mentions and I did want to designate a small little portion of the video to talk about these guys because I do think they have unique stories for each one. My first honorable mention is Justin Fields. Now while the performance on the field hasn't necessarily been as good as some of these younger quarterbacks on the list, I think as of late we have begun to see the future of what he can be. He's starting to play very good football and I've seen progression with his passing this year. Now I don't know if he's going to be the franchise quarterback for the Chicago Bears moving forward but if he gets traded to the Atlanta Falcons, watch the hell out because he could be fantastic. And if he does decide to stay with the Chicago Bears, or I guess if the Chicago Bears decide to keep him, I do think he could be fantastic there if they do get the right pieces around him. Give him a competent offensive line, give him a good defense, and give him Marvin Harrison Jr. and let him cook. We all know he has great arm strength, he has decent accuracy at times, and of course he has his mobility and pocket awareness. But for Justin Fields, the little things are kind of what hurting him and hindering him from being within my top four list. In my opinion, Justin Fields has to work on his footwork, his anticipation, and his ability to read defenses, and I think if he can improve on that, I definitely do think think he has a great future in this league. My next candidate for an honorable mention is Will Levis, and again, kind of similar to Anthony Richardson, it has been a very short sample size from him. We have seen flashes of absolute brilliance, we've also seen some flashes of kind of weird mistakes, but I do think that is to be expected for Will Levis, who was obviously a second round pick for a reason. One of our biggest complaints about Levis was the fact that he was inconsistent at Kentucky, and I kind of think it followed him into Tennessee, but I do think he was better this year with the inconsistencies than he was with Kentucky, and I do think that moving forward, he is going to be the franchise quarterback. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a long-term franchise do, but I definitely do think he's going to have a very legit shot to be the franchise guy. And I think if this team could build an offensive line, give him some weapons to work with, and really improve on their problems, I definitely do think that Will Levis can be the future quarterback for this team. And the last guy on my list, and he hasn't played a single snap of football, but I think so highly of him, Caleb Williams. I'm going to get a ton of flack for this, but I'm not even going to try to explain myself in this video. I think his talent is through the roof. I will be making a separate video on Caleb Williams because I think a lot of the reasons why people don't like him, in my opinion, are pretty flawed reasons. I think the biggest complaint for Caleb Williams as a prospect is just his character. While I don't think he is a perfect character and I definitely do think he makes mistakes, I also think his character oftentimes gets misinterpreted by a small minority of people. But when you look at him as a pure prospect, I am looking at a guy who has top 10 potential instantly in the NFL. I mean, even the little things he's good at. He has great footwork, good footwork within 
in the pocket, great accuracy, a cannon of an arm, plays with good anticipation, can read defenses, everything you want in a quarterback Caleb Williams has. And in my opinion, if you're willing to not take him in the draft because you think his character is flawed, then there's a reason why you're not a general manager in the NFL. Again, I'll make a separate video, a whole 10-15 minute discussion video regarding Caleb Williams and why I want to defend him from people like potentially you who's watching the video or whoever out there thinks that he has a character problem. But that's my little rant about Caleb Williams. Again, I do think him as a prospect can potentially lead him up here in this list next year. But if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section below on any of my takes I had in this video. And if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because that would help me out a ton. We are currently on the road to 1,000 subscribers, so make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. But I love you guys. Peace.